last speaker for the session will be Professor George Shaheen, medical oncologist in Lebanon and the co-president of the MEMAGO. And his talk will be uh, immunotherapy and the antibody direct conjugates. How far are we from clinical application? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and to see all the friends. Uh, when I, go, I know I'm maybe one of the rare medical oncologists. I always uh, used to say I'm poor lonesome oncologist between all these uh, surgeon and oncologic surgeon. But you know what, ovarian cancer now, yes, it's the surgery before. The first step is surgery. But also we are going to make our point in, 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 uh, in the treatment because more and more uh, treatment are coming for this uh, treatment. This is the first slide, and I think just to make this, uh, the, big sto the long story short, this is the, what we can see from ovarian cancer. First of all, we have more than 300,000 new cases per year, and it's, you have more than 150,000 will, de will de die from this disease. This is the leading cause of death from gynecological cancer. First stop, step. Second step, from, you know that surgery is very important because we need to have a gynecologic oncologist in our team, and surgery is very important, and the aim of surgery is only one, to have a R0 resection. We know that we have, that we have progressed with this treatment with chemotherapy, platinum-based chemotherapy. I know the standard is taxane and platinum. I've all but will agree. But even though it's not enough, many, most of the patients will relapse at, from stage two and over three, at, three, 70 percent will relapse within two years if they are stage three. And only some 25% will be at li live af after five years if uh, that's stage two. So platinum-based is not enough. So we added to platinum-based in advanced stage bevacizumab. It was the, uh, the tw 12 years ago. We begin that at our, our aim was to, to give bevacizumab to all of the patients, stage three and four. And we have uh, uh, some, maybe some PFS better results. In advanced stage, maybe a little bit of overall survival. It's very, very minor and become the last, latest one with HRD positive and the BRCA positive patient, the last uh, seven years, PARP inhibitor. PARP inhibitor became really a breakthrough in our treatment now, and it concerned about 50% of the patient. 50% will have BRCA, uh, HRD positive, and HER2 will be around 20%, 13% germ line, and 7% as somatic line. So this is the advances, but even though, we have still a problem with platinum sensitive can respond a little bit, but what about the 50% of patients who are HRD negative and refractory or, or resistant to platinum? Around one out of two will have something to do. This is my topic today because they give me a tough topic with discussing ADC and discussing the immunotherapy in, in ovarian cancer. This is my topic. So what about ADC? I put the first one ADC because we know that ADC is new approach in, in treatment of cancer, because we have here the antibody drug conjugates. They have three components, very important components, the antibody, the linker, and the payload. The, the, the aim here is to give a better, to increase the therapeutic index compared to either antibody alone or payload component, or component alone. We know that this kind of approach with ADCs, we have it in the breast cancer, we have it in, in some lymphoma. It's a better, uh, it's interesting to have better increased therapeutic index for our, for our patient. And here we have one example in ovarian cancer, the milvetuximab sorvatensin, now it was pre pre presented at, uh, at ASCO, and here the, the connector will be the, the folate receptor alpha. And the folate receptor alpha is concerned about 75% of the patient. So one question here, did you do in your practice a folate receptor alpha? Is there here some uh, pathologist? In the so nobody will do it. So this is the concern here, the importance of this concern is to do the, the folate receptor alpha, which seems to be about 75% of the patient. So this, this is a very straight and simple uh, design trial, open label phase three randomized trial, to give mervetuximab sorvatensin sorv, sorv in this patient. It was uh, included resistant disease, not, not refractory, resistant. What is the definition of resistant disease? It's less than six months response of. If you have a patient under treatment, uh, have we progressed, it's re refractory disease. They're not included in this study. The study includes only resistant patients and not refractory, high-grade serious uh, first platinum brace, and it was also allowed to give prior bevacizumab or PARP inhibitor. 
the patients were randomized one to one to receive either the treatment, uh, the, the, anti, uh, the ADC, six milligram per kilogram in three weeks, or the investigation shows Paketaxel, uh, Calix, or Tobotican. And the, sec the primary endpoint was PFS, second endpoint was overall response rate and overall survival. And this is what was important in this study. The first one, this is the distribution. And here I would like to say that uh, I, what, has, what is amazing here is systemic therapy, you have all the patients received chemotherapy 100%, 60% received bevacizumab, and 50% received uh, PARP inhibitor. This is a very heavy treated to patients. And the most important here to see the PFS was positive result. Hazard ratio 0.65, 35% of reduction of progression PFS. And moreover, the most important thing here is the, the overall survival. It's, it's something unexpected. Nobody will expect from this study to have overall survival. And here, the hazard ratio was uh, uh, 67, so 63% reduction of progression. This is what was um, important in this study. The overall survival better than, much more than PFS was the first uh, endpoint. And here, regardless of, of whether it's you know, naive or, or a predicted patient, overall survival was there. This is something very, very important. And I think in this year, in 2023, it was the most, the most relevant study to be, to be discussed. The toxicity here is very important. There is no toxicity, major toxicity like neutropenia and metallurgy toxicity. The major toxicity were ocular toxicities, blood vision, keratopathy, and dried eye. And the, this patient is reversible. So it's different toxicities, not toxicity that we can see with chemotherapy, like neutropenia or peripheral neuropathy, etc. This is uh, the profile. The response to side effects to, to stop discontinuation were less than in chemotherapy. Look at 9% of patients uh, stopped the decay because of, the, of uh, toxicities, compared to 16% of toxicity in the uh, chemotherapy area. So it's safer than chemotherapy, 9% versus 16%. It's much better in terms of result for this patient. And that's why the conclusion was uh, this combination ADC was associated with clinical benefit in all PFS, overall response rate and overall survival, and safety profile was very good, uh, well tolerated. And if, as they conclude, that the efficacy of safety profile of this ADC program is practice changing and positions agent at due standard of care for patients with fraction uh, folate receptor alpha. This is the conclusion, and uh, yes, and uh, the, uh, the, the FDA approved this agent in uh, November 2022, as you can do is use it in your patient, you have folate receptor alpha, you can use the ADC program, Mervetuximab, and the, the name of the, of the agent is Elahir. So everybody would know Elahir is now a standard of care in the States only. It's still under pending for AMA. So it's not yet approved in the, in the European uh, community, but it's, it's always approved, already approved in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the USA since November 2022. This is my first presentation because of ADC, because I think in 2023, this is the only positive study we can discuss today concerning ADC and immunotherapy. The second presentation is about immunotherapy. In immunotherapy, you have many studies. You have the DUO present at ASCO in, in, uh, in the 2023, and you have the INGOT uh, GOG, uh, the Bouquet trial uh, present at ESMO, and the INGOT of uh, 41 JCO at Anita Trial President at ESMO 2023. This is the, t the major presentation in this year. What about the first one? The DUO, it's a front line. Uh, the definition is different. It's front line, a combination of chemotherapy, bevacizumab, drivalumab, and olaparib. This is a whole. I think it's a very toxic, uh, toxic uh, cost, but uh, still, the, the combination will be to, uh, to put all together all what you can expect from new agents. So the chemotherapy at the back is another, and it's, it's, remember, it's a maintenance therapy. So you give the chemotherapy first with the bevacizumab, and then the maintenance, you give something else. This is the duo trial. There is a, it's a randomized trial, it's a, it's a phase three international randomized trial on first line. This is a first line maintenance therapy. It's not patient already treated. And the, the design was very, very well designed. Run out of FIGO 3, 3 or 4, uh, ovarian cancer, no prior systemic chemotherapy. I mean, you, have, you only exclude the BRCA mutated. The patient here, if you have, if you have BRCA mutated, or 20% of the patients were excluded because you know that in BRCA mutated, you have another very positive result. You have the PARP inhibitor, you have olaparib, for example, you have niraparib. So we have something else to give to the patient. So the study here excluded the BRCA mutated patient. All the other patients, stage three and four, were included and to be randomized in three arm. The first one, Pacrytaxel, Carbo, 
plus bevacizumab, plus bevacizumab as placebo in the first line. And the maintenance will be different. And platinum or the combination platinum carbo bevacizumab dervalumab, and then platinum carbo bevacizumab dervalumab, and the maintenance here will be different. The first step will be the, the first line, and then after the completion of six cycles of chemotherapy plus bevacizumab or dervalumab, you have to go to the maintenance therapy. The maintenance here was split in three different uh, categories. Bevacizumab, dervalumab, placebo, and orlapari placebo. The, the study, the first line is the standard one. The standard one, that means you, have gone, you only give your patient nowadays bevacizumab only. This is the first. Uh, and the second one was Bev plus Durvalumab plus Placebo or Laparib. And the third one was Bevacizumab, Durvalumab or Laparib. So it's one to one. The, the study was about 1,000 patients and they included the three types. What's important here to see what? To compare the third one, the third Bevacizumab, Durvalumab or Laparib to the other one, to the maintenance therapy as a standard one. This is what we, the aim of the study. To compare all what you put all together, Laparib. And the primary endpoint was PFS by investigator, and secondary endpoint was overall response rate, overall safety, etc. But what's important here to see that in, in the, in within the study, the certification was to see are they positive, are they negative? Because you can see in some patients you can have are they positive and BRCA negative. This is about 20%, we know from the prime Prima trial and from the uh, Paolo, Paola 1 trial, we have in some subgroups you, have, you can have BRCA and HRD and about 30%, and you have BRCA negative and HRD positive. This is, the, they include this patient. BRCA positive was excluded. BRCA negative with HRD positive was uh, uh, included, and you have a subgroup, special subgroup for HRD positive. The study here designed uh, is the same, the same as you can expect. This is uh, well balanced. You have um, the majority with high grade serous, clear cell 5%, five, five high grade endometrial 3%. But what is important to see, it's the upfront surgery is uh, what you can see, about 60% upfront. We, we know that overall picture, uh, 60%, it depends on studies, but what's something with, with, with uh, inter uh, intermed, uh, intermediate, uh, the inter interval the surgery was about 40%, but what's amazing here, residual disease was very high. Look at the residual disease, 60% macroscopic residual disease. 60% of the patients had macroscopic residual disease, in big centers, it's something, something unexpected for the study, but either way, it was well balanced. So the study will be, uh, it's, it's good because it's well balanced, but it's, not, it's, it's uh, something very important. And the HRD positive status here, 40% were positive and 60% were negative. This is the subgroup that, is, that are well balanced, but I, 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 something, uh, sorry, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's something very negative. 60% residual disease, it's not, it's not acceptable in our days. So the study here, the, the receiving the study was received. And what we can expect here, you can see that when you compare the, the, the branch here, the BEV plus DERVA plus ELASPARIB, 37 months versus 23 months to the standard care. So if you have the standard one, the branch standard one, so when you give BEV alone, the median is 23 months. When you give BEV plus DERVA plus ELASPARIB, it's around 37 months. You have uh, can 14 months more. This is significantly uh, better for PFS. And when you compare in TET to T population, you see that still you have benefit 24 months versus 19 months. So the study was positive in PFS. The first one, when you compare the HRD positive, you have a good result, about 17 months, uh, 14 months better. And in the, in the in TET to T population, old population, you have 24 months versus 19 months. And the second point here, if you have PFS here, the key import, import point, you have still 24 months versus 24, 19 months. So, so but the benefits were here in, in 10 to 3 population. But if you compare the, the branch that you give Bivacizumab and Duralab without Olaparib, the study is not positive. The positivity is only with the combination of all the drugs together, Olaparib, Bivacizumab, and Duralumab compared to the other situations. So this is the, what, what the, the, the results from this study. And here, uh, the toxicity, the, the uh, HRD states, you see that uh, states we have, if you have HRD positive, the, the result is much better, 37 months versus 23, 24. So the message here, the PFS was, uh, the, the study was positive to the PFS in comparison with all the branch, and it's mainly for HRD positive, it's better for HRD positive patient, the sub 40%, and even for the uh, 10 to treat population, the all over the population. And here, uh, the, uh, the toxicity, more than 5% is very, very low. You can, uh, anemia, 21%, 9% tropina. It's, it's very well tolerable for the patients. So the conclusion here is to try to say that 
try to met the, the conclusion of two odes when you con when you combine the, all the combination from uh, as maintenance therapy. Uh, remember you uh, maintenance therapy, not BRCA positive patient, BRCA negative patient, HRD positive patient, and all the intent to treat. When you give Walaparib, Derivalumab, plus Bevacizumab, you can have a better of PFS, a better uh, in all subgroups, and uh, only uh, PFS intent to treat is numerical, but it's still positive. So, is it? The end of the story. Can we do tomorrow to give our, all our patients? No. You have to still wait, I think, more about for the overall survival because you have to expect overall survival to see if the if combination is very, very positive or not because it's something very, very costly for the patient, for our, especially in our region. The second one was the ANITA trial. This is, uh, I think, just I put it because it was a negative study. ANITA trial was to give a phase three randomized trial, double blind platinum-based chemotherapy with or without atezo, followed by neraparib. This is, uh, you keep atezo plus uh, then neraparib in patient with or without uh, recurrent ovarian patients. And, and uh, here again, it was only free interval more than six months. It's for, refractory, for resistance patient and not refractory patient. Uh, and the study, this is a study, platinum doublet, six cycles followed by neraparib or uh, atezo plus atezo plus neraparib. The study here, uh, we don't have a study, but it was a negative study, and the conclusion was combi combi combination of atezo with chemotherapy and metaparifolate relative to recurrent, recurrent ovarian cancer is not uh, good. So here it, it's a different uh, situation. If we are not in the in, in front line. We are in second line patient, the refractory patient, a resistant patient. It was it's not good to give. It's not positive a positive study to give nirapparib plus atezolumab for these patients. The third one, the INGOT uh, G, uh, GOG, the bouquet trial, cobimetrib is MAC, uh, MAC inhibitor uh, or atezo plus BEV to persistent and recurrent epithelial cancer. This is, I put the study because uh, it's interesting here, because I, 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 I joined my first speaker here. What's important today is to define our patients, precision medicine, it's molecular biology, it's not to give things all together to give chemo plus uh, BEV plus etc. This is a study, very interesting study. It's combination cobimetinib, it's a MEC inhibitor. So the result is, is, there, is, uh, is defined. You define your patient according to the, uh, the, the biomarkers, FI1C, DX, AR receptor, and pathology. And if you have BRAF, KRAS, and RAS activated mutation, or NF1 loss, uh, loss of uh, alteration, you can give cobimetinib. This is oral therapy. And you have non-matched patient, the patient receive at the zoo plus the, the Interesting in this phase two study, it's not something, but the thing, the thing here is to go through the precision medicine and not to, to put all the patient together. And what they have shown here, that if you give to patient, if you, according to this subgroup, you can have a benefit to patient, cognitive can be beneficial to the patient. It's a very small number, the grade three, four, but still it's very important to give to patient who have this kind of subgroups, you can have a benefit if you give carbometinib. If you don't have this, this subgroup, you can give another option with atezo plus BEV and you can have a small benefit. So this is, uh, in my opinion, the most important thing is uh, the, the response are not very, very important, but here you can define in this subgroup, first, uh, 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 precision medicine, you have the bellicron biology, it's a very important, and second point is very, very important to define what is the subgroup that we can benefit, and here you can see that uh, low grade, uh, low grade uh, ovarian cancer and MLA ovarian cancer will benefit from the covid This is very important for the future, and I put it like, like a, like a, uh, a way of thinking, covid monotherapy showed a good result clinical response of 33%, it's not very high, but it's very important as a, as a proof of concept. And even though for modest uh, response, but this for me, the importance of this bouquet trial, it's just, I put it for this kind of thinking to see that a proof of concept of biomarker directed therapy. We need for the future a biomarker direct therapy and we don't need to abuse and to, to spend a lot of money for nothing but we need uh, this kind of studies. The study here, I put it, okay, it's not, a, it's not something, it's not a breakthrough, it's not, it's not revolutionary, but it's important as a concept because now we are defining, and this is what this, this job done by Ray Kukar is very interesting because she defined all the subgroups, and according to subgroup, they, they choose the, the best medicine. This is the importance of the bouquet trial. So if in summary, this is what I can say from that. The other one, I put the, just, you know, I don't want to, to bother you with all the studies. You have a lot, maybe hundreds of studies according to all groups of I IO. 
The Pembro, we have a lot of phase one, phase two, and you have some phase three. For Nevo, you have phase one, phase two, a lot of phase two. At this, you have phase one, phase two, we have seen some phase, negative phase three. You have Avelumab, Devralumab. So we have a lot of studies. I don't think they, they will add something new. The, the newest will be according to precision medicine and no more to see all these kind of studies done and, and, and the money spent uh, for nothing. Target therapy is just because the, I put some, something interesting in the, in the flame, in the ESMO at ESCO, and it is what it was a study here, the double bind controlled flame study because of efficacy of Senapari, because Senapari is a new PARP inhibitor, just to see that this study was positive. We have another PARP inhibitor, we have now Rucaparib, we have Olaparib, of course, we have Rucaparib, and you have Niraparib, and you have no Senapari. So it's another, another PARP inhibitor from other companies. The second one was that the study was, and Dr. Bizarri presented it, it's because the, the combination of, of CDK46 and, and the letrozole in a low series, it's very important because we know that, we know that and Dr. Bizarri showed it, a low series ovarian cancer is, is highly, you have ER positive, is very high. So it's very important to think for this patient, not for chemo, about chemotherapy, but about combination of hormone treatment, and one, the combination is very important, as I would put it here. And, this is the trial, and uh, it was sick and, and get a better result. So in summary, not to bother you too much, in summary, first of all, ovarian cancer still holds the highest mortality rate among gynecologic cancer. This is very important. I have shown you that 300,000 new cases, 150,000 uh, deaths. The second point, it's difficult to treat disease because of the limited number of target therapy options available and high rate of recurrence. We know that you have, recurrence is very different and the patients are different. You have what you call the refractory, the, 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 now in our definition, the, the resistant and the, uh, the, the sensitive disease. So as we move forward, we are identifying additional targets in ovarian cancer and new treatment options such as ADC are, are emerging. Yes, it's very important. But moving for me, in my opinion, it's important to move to precision and personal medicine is the must. We don't need studies uh, like we have uh, years before to give any, anything uh, altogether just to have uh, the new target. And if you ask me, the question was asked to me, are still, are still far from ADC and immunotherapy in ovarian cancer? The answer is no, because we have now ADCs available, we have immunotherapy available, but is, this is, is it the way to go for? No, the way to go for is to go for precision medicine, and this is my conclusion, and I thank you very much.